guys welcome back to part three it's been a minute but we are doing a double panel double transfer switch single generator replacement and so we are on part three it took me a little while to edit this i had a lot going on but if you're new here and haven't seen part one and two i'm going to link it below basically today we are doing the generator side so i'm knocking out the hole in the generator for our two inch seal tight and the plan is to use this Milwaukee SDS rotary hammer drill to get two holes both under the transfer switches. So we're trying to condense so that way we're not running two separate runs to the generator and then splicing in there because that's just not ideal. So. we weren't 100% sure how thick this brick was but it ended up actually being two sets of brick layer behind this to get outside followed by some vinyl siding and then there was even some wood in some areas super weird so we only had the bit that they had at home depot because we didn't know we were going to need to do this it's kind of a last minute thing so it didn't go deep enough so now i have to do a pilot bit through with this bit I also did it at an angle because there is a meter base right outside and I wasn't sure how far it was so I would rather go lower than higher and this is where it came out and so now I'm going to drill from the side. So the next thing to do was to measure where that hole came out and replicate it on the other side because both transfer switches are going to come out with car flex and they're going to go outside into a trough. So I'm measuring and now I'm going to do the same thing. So for this run, I skipped the other bit and went straight to this one. I don't know if anybody else does this, but the Diablo bits are really strong for hole saws. And so I always go backwards with very um, fragile stuff like vinyl that can crack or sheetrock. So the two inch car flex actually has a connector that is a lot thicker than the initial two inch. So I'm gonna have to make the hole bigger on the vinyl side and on the concrete side. So that's what I'm doing now. So that way I can actually push the seal tight connector inside the vinyl and have it not poking out. So that way we can make the trough waterproof. So I pre-drilled my holes for the trough and I leveled it so that way once I get the seal tight connectors in there, I can just drop the trough on and put the tap cons right through and have no issue. We ended up putting this two inch car flex into the van with the heat all the way on because it was really cold. So it was really tough to even bend or move or anything. And I also told you guys I drilled at an angle because I didn't want to be anywhere near the meter bases and I wanted the trough to not be near the meter bases. So we're at a little bit of an angle here.
Next thing we're doing is knocking out the two inch hole for the seal tight to go into the actual generator. So like I said, we heated this up. That's why it's bending so nicely. Friday before Christmas and I ain't staying here any longer. We went through Christmas and you can see I'm so happy to be back at this job. So on this part of the job, now we're going to be pushing the wire through everything and terminating our connections and just getting the hell out of here because I actually never want to come back here again. <laughs> For the wire, we are using Fora URD coming out of the trough into the generator for the power. Now we gotta rewrap it. <laughs> this is a mess. Well, I did damage to my motherboard because the generator uh, wasn't strong enough when I had an outage. Mm -hmm. The struggle of pushing four conductors through that two inch shield tight in the cold was ridiculous. <laughs> and now we are making up the connection. So I'm using Polaris bugs. I love these Polaris bugs. Usually I get the black ones, but these transparent blue ones are super nice. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm leaving slack for the wires to come in and go out. And then I'm connecting them all under the appropriate bugs. And I'm making sure I'm face taping appropriately because I do not like going into a trough or a panel and nothing is properly face taped. And I have to figure out what I'm doing before I even get to do the job. So I'm saving everybody the headache and face taping now and i also this might be overkill but i also face tape my polaris bugs the same color as the wire that i face taped because i just feel like it looks really clean i just want to get out of this fucking rain I don't know if you guys have seen these bit holders that I got off of Amazon, but I'm going to link them in my bio too because they are like $10 or $12 and you get like five nice bit holders in the bag. It is so awesome. All right, that ain't going nowhere. This one. Do not start crying about the impact on the lugs. There is a setting on the impact to stop when it's torqued. Just everybody chill. This is what I use for Polaris bugs. It's the best way to make sure that all of my connections are properly connected and tight because I do not need that coming loose over a loose connection. Three. And this is the final product. I feel like it looks pretty clean, honestly. And now to tie in the wire from the trough into the individual transfer switches, each of them.
I do use my Milwaukee Digital Torque Wrench to torque the actual lugs on any equipment because those lugs are very fragile, especially whatever they're attached to on the piece of equipment. So I do make sure to use my Digital Torque Wrench. Also, I'm gonna link it below in my bio. I am gonna be doing a review on it shortly. I just haven't had the time. It's lunchtime and we are eating that fat Italian combo while we finish. I already did the right transfer switch. Now it's time to do the left transfer switch. I also have a few things to clean up on the panel side of this left transfer switch because like I said, we were missing crimps and stuff like that. And um, I just want to clean up some of the wiring. You guys know that I have severe OCD when it comes to panel wiring and phase taping and all that good stuff. So we're going to finish up here, torque these to spec and then move over. So now I've hooked everything up. The generator company hooks up our low voltage control wires. Um, and as far as this little receptacle here, we were actually missing a chase nipple. That's what was originally here. And when we moved the panel over, it got a little bit further away. So we actually needed a piece of EMT. So that's why now that I'm back, I added the piece of EMT and I fit everything in properly. And um, everything is properly connected. All the wires are a lot cleaner. And I actually didn't fully bolt this one to the concrete, this panel. So I'm gonna do that as well right now. It's also important to note that now these panels are not the first means of disconnect after the meter. These are now the second means of disconnect after the meter, which means that the main panels are now sub panels and that the transfer switches are the main disconnects for these services so what needs to happen now is i need to put a ground bar in here and i need to connect my ground wires away from the neutral bar to make sure they're not bonded and i need to make sure that they're grounded to the panel system and separate because nec requires that you can just throw it in this pile over here And guys, we are officially done. So now I am closing up all of these panels and transfer switches. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is connect the wires that are coming out of the trough and into the generator. There is a main breaker on the generator. And so now I need to tie in everything into that. And then we're gonna be done here. And I cannot wait. This lugs two fifty inch pounds. Oh. 
And how many? Two fifty. Got the got a little bit of it. The no son of can now so go away. A little bit of a can of go so away. Got the gala, got the gala. La nota. Oh, fuck. Alejandro Cátiga Cátiga Slug is no good for this. All right, so this is the final product. We were able to strap it down to the concrete and this is it. The breaker in here is rated for three phase and also single phase. That's why you see that third one, but this is only single phase. Thanks for watching guys.